a guitarist guitarist. And uh, I certainly agree with that. We all here at Chew Fire agree with that, and I've got a feeling all of you agree with that. Um, he's considered one of the best blues guitarists in the world uh, amongst his fans, critics, and especially his peers. Uh, he's a four-time Blues Music Award recipient, 2015 British Blues Award nominee. He's played with all the top artists, including Bonamassa, and three years was lead guitarist for the fabulous Thunderbirds. Kirk's released three studio albums, a live album, and his brand new album just released a couple, let's see, a couple of months ago now, Hold On, critically acclaimed, as they say, uh, must have. Uh, Kirk's here, he's filming his first True Fire course, the rhythm edition of True Heart Blues. Uh, we've got a special, really special show, and uh, I'm just thrilled to have Kirk uh, in the True Fire family, finally. Uh, let's see if we can interrupt him and get him to interact with us all. Yo. <laughs> Woo! Oh, man. I started that intro a little late, because I'm sitting here right in front of you. got the best seat Aww. in the house, man. <laughs> um, well, the first thing I've got to say is thank you. Thank you very much for finally carving out some time to prep the course, come well, on in and you. film with us. We've been talking for a long time, haven't we? We have been talking about it, doing yeah. it for a while. And, man, your career is just blowing up all over the place. You're playing with everybody, recording your own <laughs> albums. You're just, you know... It, it's not an overnight success, is it? <laughs> no, not exactly. You, you've been doing this how many years now? <laughs> I've been playing uh, professionally for over 20, 25 years. Yeah? Yeah, with some of everybody, you know, every kind of music you can think of. You sure have, man. <laughs> and you live in Zurich now. Yeah, close to Zurich. Yeah. Now. Yeah. So you play a lot of Europe, and we don't yeah. get to see too much of you here in the States, which is kind of opposite what a, yeah. you know, a lot of the you know blues guitarists here mm -hmm. tour a little in Europe and yeah. a lot in the States. So yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Tell everybody why you moved to Zurich. I, well, I mean, it's only one or two reasons. <laughs> I fell in love with a beautiful young lady. Yeah. And, yeah, and I was already, and the other reason why is because I was already touring a lot in Europe anyway. Yeah. So, you know, when you tour so much going back and forth, it starts to kind of be like, you know, it's all the same. Yeah. You, know, you lay your head. There's really you only one reason, though, right, Kirk? Yeah. It was the number one reason. Love, man. Love. You know? Love. So yeah. let's tell everybody, um, we're going to do a lot of playing today. So hold on. We just want to set it up for you. But um, uh, this is the first of many courses we're going to do together. You know? Absolutely. I'm putting this on videotape. Say it <laughs> to the camera. You're coming back and doing more. I'm coming back and doing okay, more. If they'll have me. <laughs> okay. um, this were, first one is uh, really focused on rhythm. Um, you're, you know, as everyone just heard, a phenomenal, you know, soloist and improviser. Um, but everyone just widely respects your rhythm chops. And oh. rhythm... <laughs> You know, you, you this is the rhythm edition of True Heart Blues, which will be, you know, your brand for all of your True Fire stuff. And we decided to start here because of how important, you know, you certainly feel about it. And we certainly agree. Tell everyone why rhythm, you know, from your perspective is such an important, you know, skill and feel to have as a guitar player, especially with the blues. To me, rhythm is where it all starts. I mean, it can really propel a solo from being a mediocre solo to being a really great solo, just in the way you play rhythm and you become part of like the rhythm section too. And it's just, you know, you can command so much attention by just playing a really cool, good, solid rhythm part, you know. And that could be either playing the smallest part to playing something a little bit more busy to just a, add excitement to whatever it is you're doing you know and i just wanted to kind of you know a lot of people think of rhythm oh yeah rhythm guitar it's just one way or i have this one way to play this song but i wanted people to realize that there's many different ways you can play blues progressions in some of my own songs you know and kind of use my songs my own songs are kind of 
you know, a little bit of all of the things we talked about in, you know, like playing straight ahead blues. It kind of, you know, combines like funky kind of R&B gospel rhythm with the blues, Chicago blues and West Coast blues mm -hmm. and things like that. Well, you, you know, you certainly covered a lot of your styles here. You've done uh, 10 uh, rhythm performance studies, yeah, which pretty much, you know, represent, let's call it the palette of what feels and kind of tempos and, and even keys that are typical for one of your live performances or, or yeah. recording, you know, right? Um, let's play one, man. Sure. Um, <laughs> and then we're going to come back and talk <laughs> about rhythm some more. All right. How about you up for doing, oh, I dig this one, El Medio? The sure. Stomp. Let's do it. Tell them a little bit about the feel first. Well, this is really my tribute to, like, those um, Stevie Ray Vaughan instrumentals mm -hmm. that he had on, you know, like Scuttle Button or Testify or Rude Mood or any of those. I just kind of wanted to marry that idea with sort of a kind of a funkier soul kind of rocking thing, you mm -hmm. know. Just wanted to marry those ideas and try and make it somehow my own. <laughs> Let's hear that again. I, we loved it. <coughs> Roll it, Tommy. Killer, man. Um, you know, you said in the course, I, I, I'm paraphrasing, but basically that a, um, a great rhythm guitar player, great rhythm part mm -hmm. is the difference between kind of a mediocre solo yeah. or a really memorable one, yeah. right? And um, we hear this all the time. You know, we've got a ton of players coming through. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you, you, Robin Ford, Larry oh, Carlton, all really <laughs> embrace, you know, let's call it the art of rhythm. You guys love playing rhythm. And what we also hear from the other guys is that they love soloing when you're in the rhythm section. Yeah. You know? So it's pretty yeah. important, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it really, rhythm guitar is just, I mean, actually, it's funny because I didn't really talk about this, but even if you don't have a rhythm guitar, but your solo is rhythmic and you play it rhythmically, you know, and play certain, you know, dynamics and, you know, phrase it a certain way, it also adds, you know, so much to it if you just take the rhythm of it, you mm -hmm. know, and you can play around with the rhythm, you know, you can lay back more, you can play a phrase right on top of it, mm -hmm. you know, it's just many different areas where you can, you know, apply a good rhythm. <laughs> yeah, so, you, and you talk about the pocket, right? Yeah. Talk about the pocket here a bit. The pocket is a very broad subject to talk about because I love many different pockets for many different reasons. You know, I love the pocket of John Lee Hooker, you know, or Bo Diddley or, you know, Eddie Taylor and all these Chicago blues guys, but I as well love the pocket of Steely Dan. The Carpenters and all of these things and Joni Mitchell's guitar playing and all these things. So the pocket is so broad and that's the beautiful thing. And I think the big thing is to just be excited about music and finding something in all different kinds of music and finding the pulse and the rhythm of it and going, okay, 
well, that's really cool. That's like this trance hypnotic thing, you know, or this is this really orchestrated, you know, and perfected, beautiful piece of music. Like, I would say Michael Jackson off the wall yeah. is a good example <laughs> of yeah. a beautiful yeah. piece of music, uh-huh. you know, an album that's really well constructed and played and everybody's relaxed and it's just, it just flows. It's amazing. Yeah, and in uh, in one of the lessons you demonstrated, you know, I mean, the pocket isn't in a particular place. Like, yeah. you know, uh, it can be on the beat, it can be yeah. a little bit ahead, it can push it, right? Yeah. Um, that was a great lesson because, you know, a lot of students are looking for, well, where exactly is the pocket? You yeah, know, like, where is it? Scientifically, where is it? But it's it's where you find it and make it happen, right? Yeah. That's basically what you taught us, right? So um, we always do this. Let's shout yeah. out to where some folks are chiming in from. Yeah. Check, check this out. Hello, <laughs> Pakistan, Pismo Beach. The UK, Russia, oh, Germany, wow. Switzerland, uh, Hamburg, Calgary, Vienna, Mississippi, Brazil, <laughs> Ohio, <laughs> South Carolina, Fort Collins, Colorado, <coughs> Boston, Lima, Peru, wow. South Carolina, Mexico City, Taiwan, Poland, and Turkey. Wow. We're very close. We're very close to having all the continents covered. In wow. It always blows my mind. I say this blows every thing, single broadcast <laughs> when we have some, somebody really popular like you. Like, oh. these are all every time zone in the world. You know, wow. We've got some God knows. <laughs> oh. Somebody's up in the middle of the night or just having breakfast, you know, oh, checking wow. you out. Say hello to all your fans out there, man. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you joined us on this live podcast. It's yeah, fantastic. It right? is. Yeah. And uh, they're, you know, they're giving us some questions as well, which I'll, I'll get to in a, a little bit. Mm-hmm. But let's play something else, man. Sure. How about, oh, let's do the Dupree groove. Oh, okay. I think it's in the key of E, right? Yeah. that yeah <laughs> fantastic man oh. um I, I think already folks get a picture for kind of the range of feels you're yeah. bringing here and uh did you notice how many people that didn't really need to be in the control room kind of wandering into <laughs> i don't know if you could see through the glass but you know um you've got a lot of fans right here at oh. true fire and uh what oftentimes happens is there's a lot of requests for early rough cut versions of your course so that we can start digging in on it, you know? Um, by the way, uh, New Zealand chimed in, India, Australia, wow. Greece, Antarctica. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, bet you a little cold there. Yeah. We're, we're just back from Montreal. It was very cold there. I can only imagine Antarctica. Yeah. So um, we may have hit every continent. So you've got fans all over the world, man. Wow, that's amazing. Um, let's talk about, um, you know, your left hand muting approach is, is really key to a lot of the rhythm work that you do. Can, mm-hmm. can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the left hand is always, it's doing actually less. It's more about with this hand, it's like more muting and like kind of getting off the strings. You know, mm-hmm. you'll play something like, and you just give it enough, you know, press it down to make the notes mm-hmm. come out, but you'll get off of it after that really quickly mm-hmm. to make it really choppy. Yeah. You know, 
it's just like that real, and that's something that I really wanted to talk about mm -hmm. a lot. You know, the right and the left hand. Which type. you do. I mean, you've got that right right hand moving all the time, right yeah. in time. <laughs> and uh, there's Flies a per, home, so. you know there's <laughs> right, there's a percussive <laughs> thing happening with you know the left hand as well by muting the strings. Yeah, this is still going. Yeah. Kind of jab, kind of yeah. like, you know, yeah, really quick lift up. Yeah. You know, um, talk about the right hand a little bit. The right hand, I like to keep really loose. And I mean, this is really a big tradition in like the funk guitar school, mm -hmm. you know, with like Jimmy Nolan and Catfish Collins and all of my heroes from the funk guitar world, you know. So, and, and also like gospel guitar playing really fast tempos in church, you know, like. I have a real Pentecostal church background, and mm -hmm. we played really, you know. So you, if you're going to keep playing that for like a couple hours, mm -hmm. you have to develop a technique to where you can play it, and it's like almost effortless. Mm -hmm. So I don't even really think about it now, but mm -hmm. since I've done this course, I had to kind of like think about where did this come from? That's well, really how interesting. How did I man. develop? Yeah. You know, how so, did I do mean, it? that's thousands of hours of that, work in that really kind is. of a rhythm, huh? It that's, really is. That's phenomenal. Your buddy, Josh Smith, yeah. who was in here recently, <laughs> um, and, you know, you are two of the you know, the stars, the new stars oh. in this world. You really are, man. <laughs> but he said something, you know, mm -hmm. coincidentally, very similar, which was go pick up any James Brown record and just yeah. play along with it for a thousand hours, right? Yeah. That's what basically what you're saying too, That's right? That's what I tried to say in the course. I really <laughs> said, you know, like instead of, you know, we live in a world where there's so much going on to grab our attention and push it away from just buckling down mm -hmm. and really getting one or two concepts. Mm -hmm. And that's really what I want to emphasize was just, you know, like, okay, take one record, take one song and listen to that for a month, you know, and then you'll really internalize the groove and stuff. If you have any questions about mm -hmm. the groove yeah. or the pocket or where yeah. it is, listen to a fantastic music with great pocket players that's right <laughs> you do talk about that in the course how important listening is you don't yeah. even have your guitar in 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 yeah. your hands <laughs> listen right yeah absolutely um, i love that man so um i i wanted to ask you this one question before we do the sure. the next performance which is mm -hmm. You chose to do the rhythm course first before yeah. the soloing course, yeah, because you felt that that was really the foundation. If you be, if you become a great rhythm player, it talk about that. Well, the rhythm course first is really to make people to try and make people excited about not only rhythm guitar but just excited about music and to bring up some players and more some maybe more obscure players and hit people to some of my influences mm -hmm. for rhythm and just let people know that rhythm is fun and there's so much that you can do and so much that you can say with just playing a really great rhythm part, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that, that's really what I want to emphasize, you know, first. Yeah. You know? And so many of us, you know, let's call us mere mortal guitar players, <laughs> We tend to go right for the lead plane, right for the yeah. licks, and sort of ignore our, our rhythm plane, right? Yeah. So, um, so let's show them how that has influenced your soloing. Uh, how about soloing over a slow blues? You want to do that? Sure. Tommy? We always like soloing. <laughs> oh, you do. <laughs> <Two>. <laughs>
that track went on for a few minutes longer. <laughs> uh, pretty you. crazy, man. Um, you do you so like much. playing the slow blues? I really, really, that's where I really feel my voice coming through, you know, mm -hmm. just trying to tell a story, you mm -hmm. know, and just, you know, take one note and shake it. <laughs> so, you know, uh, True Heart, you know, the ne your brand here at True yeah. Fire. Um, really kind of reflects your inner soul, doesn't it? Um, you know, you have a really uh, awesome way of thinking about music and, and what your role is as a musician. Do you want to talk a little bit about that here for folks? Well, you know, I, I said, I think, in the um, lesson, like, I really try and listen to music with an open heart, you know? And right. to me, that means, like you know, this is great, and I can find something in this that's cool. Or maybe just the lesson learned from listening to it is what not to do. Mm -hmm. But you listened to it, and you gave it the time to listen to it. And, I, and the, the music that I really love, and if something catches me, I'm so passionate about it, and I'll just listen to it over and over again. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a like a child discovering, you know, something for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I try and always keep that kind of, mm -hmm. you know, focus. And I really just, I mean, music is just as important as playing the guitar for mm -hmm. me, you know. And that's the, I always say, you know, I just want to make people excited about music. I'm yeah. not going to say again, because there are many people yeah. that are very excited about music. Yeah. But just that feeling of seeing your favorite guitar player many who you've had here, you know, do wonderful lessons. Yeah. I was 19 years old and I saw Robin Ford play and it changed my life forever. Yeah. I mean, his playing and phrasing and everything yeah. was just changed my life and really set me up for, you know, a lot of the stuff I do t to this day. You yeah, know? and you're moving it all forward too. And man. he played all loud. <laughs> the band was yeah. amazing and it yeah, was awesome, know. you know, and I I'm know. getting excited again just thinking about it. Yeah, well, and you I wanna... know, you're doing the same thing for many yeah. of us as well. You certainly <laughs> are. And, you know, you have such a uh, positive, um, beautiful kind of outlook on everything. And, and I will tell you how Kirk is right here on camera <laughs> is exactly how he is when we're lunch or sitting in a control room <laughs> talking you're just a really positive you know beautiful person and it's fun to hear you play your music and fun to interact with you and you and so that comes across in the course as well so Thank you've you. done an awesome job let's get a couple of questions sure here, okay? yeah um let's this is my see. favorite There's part question <laughs> uh way up top here about um, what, <laughs> uh, this is Alexi from Russia. Hi, uh, Alexi. What's the secret of blues phrasing and improvisation and the best way to learn the blues language? How would you answer that? Quick answer on that. Okay, learn from the masters. Yeah. And you know, there are many people that say, you know, oh, well, you should do your own thing. And you should, you know what? You should sit down with a bunch of B.B. King records, Stevie Ray Vaughan, and whoever else you like, and learn it note for note. <laughs> and start there. It's like the ABCs of soulful, bluesy mm -hmm. guitar to me because it's so much, it's some things about blues phrasing mm -hmm. and certain things that you can't really explain because it changes every time and you're almost improvising and you're, mm -hmm. You know, the way I look at a solo is you're coming from different places. You might come from more of a traditional place, and mm -hmm. you can grab from all these things, like a professor would or an artist would or whatever else. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. So it's a lot more in-depth than just, you know, a few pentatonic blues licks or, mm -hmm. you know, something. You got auto, you know, dynamics and all of these things. Mm -hmm. you know? But it starts with, l which is what you've been telling us all along, listening yeah listen to the masters and, and learn the language uh, yeah sort of like we learn how to speak right yeah. we talk to each other listen to people who under you know yeah. who can speak the language and that's how we learn the language right absolutely very cool man second question this is from usman <laughs> uh from pakistan wow uh, can you speak about improving blues rhythm playing and copying with other instruments um uh, 
I, I, I guess, you know, you've been talking obviously a lot about rhythm and comping, mm-hmm. but talk about what you're hearing and how you're locking into the pocket. Uh, what are you hearing from the bass and the, the drummer that helps you craft your part? <laughs> well, I'm a little bit overboard with this mm-hmm. because I, once again, it's listening to a bunch of great records mm-hmm. of all sorts. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a friend, a really close friend, a fantastic guitar player, if I may name drop for a of minute, course. Michael Landau. Mm-hmm. You know, and he played something on one of his records, and he waited, you know, till like the song went around a couple times, and then he put that part right in there. Mm-hmm. And it had so much impact, and you were just like, whoa! That was the per. That was like, man, you, uh-huh. that was perfect. Uh-huh. How do you think to do that? Yeah. You know, and this is like your toolbox. This is all the stuff you gather, right? You know, over time. Yeah. So it's like, oh man, you know, time and space and yeah. you know, comping. And so, I'm sorry, did I? Am I answering the question? Well, it, <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you are or not because it's you know brilliant information. You know, do you hear? You know, if the drummer's doing something on the hi-hat, does that kind of inform what you're going to do on the guitar? Give us one example of that. Absolutely. Like, if a drummer's laying down a groove, you know, you got, like, a shuffle going, and he'll play, like, say, you know, like, you know, like, on the hi-hat or whatever like that. I'll, like, play half that or whatever. You know, like, if he's, like... I'll usually play. And that contrast between those yeah. two is something, you know, or I'll find out where the pocket is. If it's a drummer that maybe has shaky time, yeah. then I'll play differently. I'll create a lot of uh, motion in my part, uh-huh. you know, like on the shuffle, say, for instance. If he's got kind of shaky time, I'll help him, uh-huh. you know, because we're in this together. What so a I'll very play. polite way of describing that yeah. shaky time. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll play like... You know, because I've worked on trying to play with, you know, make everything feel good. Yep. You know, if I'm yep. playing with a not so good drummer mm-hmm. or a bass player's weird or whatever mm-hmm. like that, I'm not going to vibe it out or make yeah. everybody, you know, like up But you'll kind of establish more of the rhythmic framework and kind of help him find the pocket. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And what about bass players? What do you hear from a bass player that might, you know, influence what you play on the guitar? Well, sometimes I'll double his part. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, you know, for impact. Mm-hmm. You know, if the 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 audience is like, you know, dancing and stuff like mm-hmm. that, I'll just play. Or if it's a lot going on, mm-hmm. I'll lay out. Maybe not play anything, or mm-hmm. I'll just double the bass line. And sometimes, interesting. But you know, you have to like listen to '60s music mm-hmm. and the Wrecking Crew and people like that mm-hmm. to get different ideas yeah. you know because i really got that from listening to movies from the 50s and the 60s where they'd have like you know four guitar players yep. upright bass electric yep. bass yep. a yep. baritone guitar uh-huh. you know nice so, well and if a bass player is pretty much sticking to the root you know yeah. third and fifth are you staying away from those tones on you know with your chord selection well that or, or sometimes, you know, playing fuller chords. What, yeah. How do you think about that? Well, that's a really good thing because, you know, I've played for many years in a really, really traditional blues context where a lot of times it would be an upright bass. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they're playing like root fifth, mm-hmm. root fifth, or mm-hmm. whatever like that. And then you can kind of dance around that in like a swing band kind of yeah. context. You can play little like embellishments, you know, like if they're playing... You know, if they're playing something simple like that or even simpler, I can play like. You know, or something more, just little stabs and stuff. Yeah. Once again, that goes back to knowing the music and knowing the context. And and when to do it, right? Yeah. Let's get one more question answered and then we'll play something else. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Hold on. Uh, well, 
Oh, uh, wait. We already <laughs> answered one of his questions. <laughs> um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we can. We need to share the wealth, right? I'll tell you what, let's go and play something. Okay. How about um, another one of my favorites? Thank you for letting me pick out all my yeah. favorite tracks. I get to hear them again. <laughs> um, two Steps Forward, which you do in A flat, which yeah. is a very unusual key for guitar. It is. Why do you play A flat? Well, for one thing, is I'm singing, and yeah. I have when it goes to the E flat part in the song yeah. over that single note line. Yeah. It's pretty high for me to sing, yeah. you know, so I want to have power. So it's all about the vocal. Plus, for me, I don't really look at keys the same way a guy that maybe grew up playing like folk music mm -hmm. or whatever. Because yeah. I grew up playing everything in closed kind of positions, and yeah. I had to actually learn my in open positions. Interesting, yeah. So I don't really think, So it know, doesn't matter. Keys, All your chord forms are movable yeah. chords, right? Yeah. Yeah, very cool. But for an effect, though, I like the open chords, sure. too. I mean. Absolutely. All yeah. right, let's do two steps forward. Roll tape, Tommy. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Thank you so um, much. We've got, there was something else I loved in the course. I got my notes here. Hang on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, the chord embellishments. Uh, yeah. A uh, little lesson. Like, you know, take a chord, mm -hmm. any, any chord, take mm -hmm. a chord, any chord, yeah. and show us some various ways you embellish it. Like, let's say a ninth chord, you know, mm -hmm. very common chord in the blues, mm -hmm. right? Show, just show us some embellishments for chords, you know, that we might not know, you know? Yeah. Well, there's a thing that I talk about in the course called call and response, mm -hmm. you know? And one thing, like, you take, uh, like, a B-flat 9 or whatever, and I go... Uh, <laughs> you know, I'll do that. Yeah. And also, like, um, things like on the last song I just played, too, I do this, like, little pinky hammer. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And also, I'll do, like, embellishments, like, I'll slightly bend things, too. Uh -huh. Like, you'll hear on, like, uh, El Medio Stomp, yeah. I kind of do. Right. Nice. You know, or like on the shuffle, I'll play. You know. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a big part of what I do is like little bends and yeah. shaking you notes. You do these little, you know, these little, they, they make, they're little things that make such a big difference in the sound, you know. It's really like um, you're... What I love about your playing is you're not self-indulgent. You're not showing off a lot of stuff. It's those little spicy things you throw in there that really make it just, you know, perfect. <laughs> you know, There's that's your reputation, <laughs> man. You know, 
I'm not the only one with that opinion. Oh. Um, you want to play another one? Sure. How about, well, there's a question here about mm -hmm. um, some comping variations over a shuffle. Mm -hmm. um, Tommy, can we roll that shuffle and just have you comp over that and show sure. us a couple different ways? Um, what, what did we open up with? The signature shuffle, Tommy? Yeah. Let's roll that, um, just bass and drums, mm -hmm. and show us some different ways to comp over. You know, sure. shuffles always come up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> shuffles. <laughs> Man. Show everybody that little chromatic move up into the court. Show, slow that way down for us. The, uh, show like, us that move. Ba -da -da. You know. Yeah. So you're going one? up from a whole step down, up to it, or nice. Yeah. And I got that from a great guitar player named Chris Kane. Always got to give right. it up to my you, buddy Chris you, Kane. You, you do, man. <laughs> That's a great. Yeah, that's a great move. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to, I'm hoping that you <laughs> included that in the course as well. If not, we have this video. <coughs> uh, you know, this thing is, we're broadcasting live, but as soon as it's done, it'll be forever, you know, forever. up on uh, our channel on YouTube. So we're, All right. you know, a few of us are going to go and cop that from you anyway, you know? <laughs> um, so another question. Sure. We have... Uh, from Mr. Reindeer Q, he <laughs> says, he asks. Probably a friend of mine. <laughs> uh, probably. Um, vibrato, pull yeah. down or push up first is the question. Oh, it depends on what string it is. Could be either, right? It could be either. Give For me. A, a couple of examples. Um, you know, I'll do like, I do some weird stuff when it comes to vibrato yeah. because I'm trying to get a certain thing in my hand just the way you know my hand and you know yeah. everything I can get more power maybe one way or another so one thing I do is like just go so that's all middle finger but yeah. it sounds slower yeah. if I played it another with another finger like up it'd be like uh -huh. it's harder to play yeah this way it's a little more drunk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, you know. I mean, a big guy for me is Otis Rush and B.B. Yeah, King, I'll you know. So. 
whether you go up or down or whether it's a fast bar route or a slow yeah. one is in your head and mm -hmm. that drives which finger and technique you're going to use basically absolutely right? it's a conscious thing for you yeah. right okay um let's play mm -hmm. let's play one more so we've okay. played six of the ten you know kind of performance studies mm -hmm. how about that butt rocking shuffle <laughs> in e? want to do that one? Oh yeah that's okay. you know jimmy vaughn the second generation of Texas blues, yeah. and I'm just, it's my feeble attempt <laughs> of playing it, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, feeble. Yeah, yeah. we get it. Oh, okay. man. <laughs> I love it so much, though, you know, and it's, you know, I've played that quite a, quite a lot. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, let's do it again. My pleasure. You have so much fun when you play, don't you? Well, that's always, I love playing those uh -huh. kind of grooves. They're so fun. Oh, gosh. Um, cut another question. Uh, this one from Uljo. From your experience over the last years, do you think the audience is getting younger or is blues still for the older audience? <laughs> Well, that's kind of a question that I feel like <sighs> there's many reasons for the blues being for older people. Mm -hmm. I mean, because a lot of blues artists continue to play the same music mm -hmm. they have forever, and it's, you know, just they're not doing much new with it, mm -hmm. you know, because you have this blues community that's all about the old school. Mm -hmm. Then you have this community that's all about new and they don't listen to anything that's old. Mm -hmm. And then you got the middle of the road. I mean, so it's like, I think as long as you're fresh and you do your own spin on it and mm -hmm. you write your own songs mm -hmm. about cool stuff and you do it on a high level, I think it'll attract younger people. So let's talk about, so you see a lot of young people. I mean, I've, I've seen you. Well, There's a lot of young people in your audience, right? I think that might be guitar fans, yeah. too, though. You know? Yeah, you probably have a lot of those. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I also try and do music that's yeah. not just only one way. I won't yeah. say, because I'm really a purist at heart. Yeah. But I like all different kinds of music. Yep. So it's like, you know, I can, like, if I play traditional blues, I want it to stay within that traditional blues box. Right. If I'm going to go play rock blues, let's yeah. get with it. Yeah. Let's go out here and burn. Right. I mean, that's fun, right. you know. I think it's all fun. So um, 
you know, I don't want to put you on the spot because I know you're going to forget to mention somebody and <laughs> later you're going to go, oh, my God. <laughs> but I'm going to put you on the spot, right? Yeah. So you said, you know, there are, and we're all very familiar with the guys, you know, the guys, the purists who have been playing the blues and yeah. that we grew up with, and, and mm -hmm. that's what they do, and we love them for yeah. doing that. Um, but you mentioned the, the, you know, the guys that are bringing something fresh to it and yeah. kind of name – Tell you what, I'll make it easy. Just name three, not necessarily in any order, other guys besides yourself that are bringing something fresh to the blues today. Well, I would say that my good buddy Josh Smith, yeah, Matt Schofield, yeah. uh, of course Joe Bonamassa, yeah. my good buddy. Sure. You know, and like it's hard for me to say blues because I think that there's people that have like bluesy influences. Yeah. Um and soul and stuff and like there's like Blake Mills yep. and you know different people right. like that so I think right now is a really exciting it time yeah. for guitar and I think yeah. you all here at True Fire play yeah. a big part in that yeah. well we're I trying mean, man <laughs> I buy the courses you know it's <laughs> yeah. like we're it's trying, exciting man. what's interesting to us is um, you'll hear some of you know younger or more contemporary artists um, play their music, mm -hmm. you know, that is very contemporary, resonates with, you know, younger audiences and older audience. And it, you can tell it's rooted in the blues. Yeah. You know? I mean, rooted in traditional blues. Yeah. But they do bring something very fresh and a nice twist to it. And That's beautiful. I mean, the blues feeds everything, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, gear. We're running out of time. So <laughs> let's Palmer. run down your gear first. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, everyone's in. Just start with the guitar. Tell us what kind of amps and pedals you might use. You know, when sure. you're out gigging, mm -hmm. do it. Well, this guitar is a few years old now, and it's basically it came. It was born uh, collector's choice Gibson Custom Shop collector's choice mm -hmm. Nikki, mm -hmm. but its new name is Hattaby <laughs> <laughs> after my. Auntie, because she was, oh, you know, beautiful. fiery and beautiful nice. all at the same time, you know. Yeah. So that's the it's, guitar. It's beautiful. I mean, and it is a Les Paul all the way, you know, just right out of the box kind of. No, um, no yeah, modifications. I, I did change the pickups. This is a Ron Ellis pickup okay. in the neck position. And nice. this is the original PAF in the bridge. So okay. it's got that real bite, and it has yeah. a different wiring harness, too, an yeah. old wiring harness. Well, let me tell you this. Don't <laughs> forget that guitar when you pack up, because <laughs> we'll swear you took it with you, okay? <laughs> well, I thought it was here. <laughs> no, we saw it get into the cab with you, you know? Um, what about, what kind of pedals do you normally gig with? Well, you know, basically, it's going to be reverb, maybe delay, maybe not delay, yeah. In some kind of drive, you know, if I'm playing a Gibson guitar, I mm. really like the sound of like a Gibson guitar with a tube screamer style pedal, mm -hmm. yeah. sort of a boost to really, because I don't use a lot of gain, yeah. you know, it's more about sustain. Yeah. That kind of rhymed, didn't that it? That does. There's <laughs> a song for you, man. In my new edition, yeah. and you'll know where this comes okay. from. It's a Showbud volume pedal, okay. just like my hero Larry Carlton. <laughs> of course, of course, yeah. <laughs> of course. And it's great. It's like I tried volume pedals, mm -hmm. you know, for like a lot, you know, just because with the Gibson you mm -hmm. got the two volumes yeah. and everything. But this one, the sweep is just so, it's shorter and it's sweet, you know, it's just. It's very natural. Yeah. Very cool. Re you know. Yeah. So, you know, when you're, and what, and amp wise, what, what's common for you on stage? Well, I'm from LA, and I mean, yeah. the 70s LA studio musician. Yeah. Everybody had Princeton reverb there amplifiers. So I saw that, and I was like, okay, yeah. Gibson, Princeton, yeah. I'll go for it. But normally um, in the States, you know, which I go to a lot still, yeah. I, I have my old super reverb. And in Europe, yeah. I have a 633 amp, yeah. and it's like, Basically styled after a tweed basement, but my nice. buddy Cliff Brown tweaked it for me, and it's amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, you'll dial in your tone. Mm -hmm. uh, just describe it. If you had to tell somebody really quickly how you would dial in your tone. Yeah, you know, well. Are you going to start with reverb? You're going to have a little 
r- reverb on there or well yeah i'll the first thing i'll do is just figure out what the amp can do okay where is the breaking point when yeah. is it going to start crapping out yeah you know and then i'll back it off from there and i usually set my volume and tone uh i'm sorry my treble and bass i'll yeah. set that on like five o'clock and okay. then add more or you know take mm-hmm. some away or whatever mm-hmm. and really try and get like just a good fundamental clean mm-hmm. tone yeah first yeah and then i'll try and figure out what pedal will work good with that backline amp if okay. i'm not using Very my own cool. amp yeah and just add a little just enough so i can sustain or mm-hmm. if i hit a power cord or yeah. something hard i yeah. can get enough grit on it nice so that's my starting point nice yeah. and uh you'd be terribly jealous i'm sure i know we're both big fans of larry carlton and of course you know in in one of his courses i think his first course he brought to the shoot on like the second or third day the prince the actual princeton amp and the uh 335 335, that he played the kid charlemagne solo with oh man oh my goodness it was something else just to see that you know that's so um your latest album, Hold On, it's big buzz about that. You know, tell us all about what it was like recording with those guys and, you know, how you feel about the album. Critics love it. Fans love it. Your peers love it, you know. <laughs> how Do you love it? I really, really am proud of that record. Yeah. I really, you know, everything that I wanted to get across, I was able to get it across, you mm-hmm. know. I mean, because it was really about stripping everything away trying mm-hmm. to get to the song and try and say a really direct message mm-hmm. you know about my observations up until this point mm-hmm. you know and i recorded it i got the idea to do it in the organ trio format yeah but not play jazz you right. know like your typical organ right. trio i just wanted that limitation uh-huh. to give it some space and just create yeah. this whole like you know, vibey thing. And I met, you know, Johnny Henderson some years back through Matt Schofield, yeah. who just done a course for you. Yeah. And I met the drummer, Matt Brown, uh-huh. through Johnny Henderson. Yeah. So they had played together a lot. Uh-huh. So I was thinking already, yeah. this is going to be cool. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they were very excited to do this thing with you as well. Oh, right? man, those guys are great. And yeah. we played a lot and toured a lot last uh-huh. year. And we yeah. have dates coming this year, That's too. That's great, man. You know. Well, love the album. Encourage Thank everyone so to, to pick it up and, and buy it, okay? Just buy it. You can stream it, but buy the album, for God's sakes, yeah. okay? You I'll know? sign it at my gig, too. <laughs> there you go, okay? <laughs> Um, and uh, let's see, I know you're going on, talk about anything that's coming up, a tour. I know you're going to do the Keeping the Blues Alive tour yeah. uh, in just a couple of days, right? Yeah. So what else is going on? Well, I have um, in the UK when I get home, you know, in a couple of weeks, I have the Bristol Jazz Festival that nice. I'm playing. And that's where I played the first time with these guys that yeah. played on the record. So it's sort of like a homecoming type thing. Yeah. And I'm also playing at the Borderline the night before. So a couple of UK dates there. And then I'm playing some in Germany in April and doing some different things. And oh, and then I'm coming back to the States, actually. Yeah. And I'm going to play uh, at the Big Blues Bender yeah. in Las Vegas. That's so right. I'm looking forward to that. And King Biscuit Blues Festival. Yeah, so. I know. Your, your, your schedule is crazy. So I'm going to ask everybody in the listening and watching audience to send Kirk emails and say, when you come back to the States to do that thing, carve out a couple days, come back to True Fire. We <laughs> want to do, to. We want to do the soloing <laughs> companion to, Absolutely. Uh, I would love to, to the rhythm edition. Cool? I would love to. All right, man. Thank you so much for <laughs> carving you. out this time. Finally, you know, getting here to True Fire. Thank the you. course uh, is, uh, is awesome. You know, I think there's a link somewhere in the broadcast. Um, we're going to fast track it cause I know All folks right. are going to want to get on it. <laughs> um, let's pick a tune and, you know, solo out Tommy, which okay. one do you want? Uh, how about the slow blues? Let's do the slow blues out. Okay. Okay.
your buddy Josh Smith, I gotta, I gotta get this in, is tuned in watching you live right now. Wants to know when is the Kirk Fletcher signature Hawaiian shirt gonna be available to the public? <laughs> Soon. Soon. <laughs> You're going to see him in a couple of days. You can tell him all about it then. I um, want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, we so much appreciate your support. Um, uh, we're so excited to have Kirk and Josh, all the other guys you've seen coming through the studios. Uh, can't wait for this course, man. You've done a phenomenal, phenomenal job. True Heart Blues, the Rhythm Edition. Oh, yeah. Coming to a screen near you really soon. Thanks, everybody.